Hey guys, Chris from Adaptuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to prepare income statements with adjustments for the provision for bad debts. So before we get into this video, I want to let you know a couple of things. Okay, so firstly, the way that I'm going to show how to calculate the provision for bad debts in this video is the traditional way that CSEC students are taught, where the provision for bad debts is taken as a percentage of the debtor's figure in the information given. I have seen another method where the provision for bad debts and the bad debts expense interact. So that's not the way I'm going to be showing it in this video. The second thing I need to let you know is I have a previous video explaining the basics behind the provision for bad debts. It talks about how to calculate the provision for bad debts, how to fill out the T account for the provision for bad debts, how to enter the, fill out the extracts with the income statements and the balance sheet, and it explains the logic as to why we create a provision for bad debts in the first place. If you need to check out that video, there's a card up there and there will be a link in the description below. The third thing is the examples in this video are going to be quite short and cut straight to the point. We're not going to have a long trading section. We're also not going to have a long list of expenses. It's going to be very short as a matter of fact. The reason behind this is because I want to get straight to and focus on the matter at hand, adjusting for the provision for bad debts. And finally, this video is the second in a series I'm doing on how to prepare income statements with adjustments. The previous video dealt with accruals and prepayments. The next video I'm going to do will deal with the provision for depreciation. And the final video will bring them all together. So if you want to check out those videos, take a look in the description below. And while you're at it, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I love getting questions from you guys and helping you out. Okay, with all that said, let's get to it. Okay, so first thing to do is read the question. Let's take a look. So we are being asked to prepare the income statement for the profession for bad debts for the month ended 31st, May 2019. All right, so what do we have? Sales revenue, cost of sales, other revenues, debtors, other expenses. Like I said, keeping it real short and simple so we could get straight to the point. The additional information is where you need to look to find out information about your adjustments. It says a provision for bad debts of 10% of debtors is to be created. So all we have to do to find the dollar value for the provision is multiply that 10% by the debtor's figure up here. 10% of 50,000 is 5,000. But where do we put it? Where does it go in the income statement? Well, let's start plugging in, heading up the income statement and putting in figures to see where that goes. Okay, so the name of the entity is Proficient for Bad Debts. The name of the financial statement is the income statement and it's for the month ended 31st May 2019. All right, so our first item will be our sales revenue, which will be 80,000, and that will be followed by our cost of sales, which will be 30,000. That'll give us a gross profit of 50,000. So that we have to add other revenues, which just is 2,000 in this particular case, 50 and two will give us 52,000. From that, we have to minus expenses. So we'll put our other expenses first, that's 20,000 there, and here, is where we will put the provision for bad debts. Sorry, right? That's ten percent. Sorry, of og <laughs> fifty thousand, which is five thousand. We'll have a total expenses of twenty-five thousand, and <clears throat> our net profit will be twenty-seven thousand dollars. Now, let me explain why the provision for bad debts goes in the expense section. The provision for bad debts represents the value of debtors or receivables we expect to be uncollectible or lose. It therefore represents the loss in value of an asset to us. Losses in value of assets are loss items which decrease profit, just like expenses. So because of that, the loss items such as the provision for bad debts will go in the expense section in the income statement. The other thing to note is that across in the initial information, there was no pre-existing value or balance for the provision for bad debts. So what do we do in that particular case? Well, if there was one, what we'd have to do is analyze the change in the provision, whether it increased or decreased, and that change, the amount of the increase or the decrease will go in the income statement. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take a look at a second example to see what we do in that particular case. All right, so let's start by taking a read of the information for the second example. So once again, we are asked to prepare the income statement for profession for bad debts. Now this time is for the month ended June 30th, 2019. So it's the month after the example from just now. So sales, cost of sales, other revenues, debtors. Mm. 
we're seeing an existing provision for bad debts. That's the 5,000 we just created in the previous example of their expenses. Now, what, what happens when we have this extra 5,000 here? Well, the additional information says we still have to create a provision for bad debts of 10% of debtors. Well, 10% is the provision has to be maintained. Now, if we, if we look at the information, the debtors figure is 70,000. And if we find 10% of 70,000, that, that gives us 7,000. Now, is 7,000 more or less or the same as the existing provision of 5,000? Well, it's more. By how much? By 2,000. So in this case, there's an increase in the provision for bad debts of 2,000. And it is that amount that goes into the income statement. I did tell you that before, didn't I? Let's take a look at the end of the clip from just now. Play it. The other thing to note is that across in the initial information, there was no pre-existing value or balance for the provision for bad debts. So what do we do in that particular case? Well, if there was one, what we'd have to do is analyze the change in the provision, whether it increased or decreased, and that change, the amount of the increase or the decrease will go in the income statement. <clears throat> See, I told you. Okay, let's start putting things into the income statement. So we know we start with the name of the entity, the name of the financial statement, the period to which it applies. First thing here is gonna be sales revenue, which is 90,000. Then we're gonna to have to minus cost of sales, which is in this case 40,000, which is gonna give us gross profit of 50,000. The next thing we have to do is get the other revenues, which in this case is 3,000, which will give us 53,000 before expenses. Now with expenses, we have our other expenses of 30,000. And now we have the provision for bad debts. Now, what figure goes there? So we just said it was 10% of the 70,000 which is 7,000, and we're gonna minus the existing provision of 5,000. That gives us 2,000. <clears> so our total expenses will now be 32,000, and 32 from 53 will give us a net income of 21. So there we see, if we have an increase in the provision for bad debts, it is the amount of the increase, the change in the provision that goes in the income statement. That's a very important point. And it's one that caused me a lot of grief because it's just something I didn't latch on to when I was doing CSEC in Form 4 and Form 5. So I'm hoping that I can share my experience with you and my knowledge with you so you won't have as hard a time as I did. Okay, so <clears throat> that's what to do if there's an increase in the provision. But what about if there's a decrease? What do we do with that? Well, let's cut to the next example one time. Okay, so in our third and final example, we'll take a look at what to do when the provision for bad debts has to decrease. So if we take a read of the question, we're going to see we have to prepare income statement, provision for bad debts, right, so for the end of July, so the month after the previous examples. So sales, cost of sales, other revenues, debtors, ah, existing provision there from last month, and we have to maintain a provision of 10% of debtors. 10% of debtors in this case will give us 6,000. 6,000 is 1,000 less than 7,000. So what do we do when we have a decrease in the provision? Do we put a negative item in the expense section? No. When we had an increase, we would have put that increase in the expense section in the income statement, which is essentially a debit to the income statement and debits decrease profits. So here, if, we, if the opposite is happening, if we are decreasing the provision for bad debts, it means that instead of debiting the, the, the income statement, we're going to have to credit it and credit to the income statement will increase profit. So where do we have increases in profit? Well, apart from sales revenue, we have other revenues that we add to gross profit. So that's where we're gonna put this item. Let's start filling out the income statement so we can take a look and see how it looks. So name of the entity, name of the statement, period for which the statement applies. Sales, 120,000. Um, less cost of sale, which is 50,000 in this case. Gross profit of 70. So we have other revenues of 4,000 and the provision for bad debts. In this case, right, so like I said, so we have the 10% um, the of, sorry, <laughs> 60,000. And it's com that, that's, that's compared to the 7,000 existing provision. So that's a decrease of 1,000, which goes here. So that's gonna give us a, Total other revenues of 5,000, which when we add it to the gross profit will give us 75,000. Now, the less expenses. So we're gonna put, well, we only have one set of expenses, right? 
because we have no provision for balance figure there now because we had a decrease in the provision. So we have other expenses of 40,000, which means our net profit is 35,000. So that's what happens when we have a decrease in the provision for bad debts. It's added to gross profit in the other expenses section. Okay, so we looked at what to do when there's an increase in the provision and when there's a decrease in the provision. But something else can happen or not happen. Sometimes the provision can stay the same from one month to the next or from one period to the next. In that case, guess what's gonna happen? Nothing. You're gonna have no adjustment to make in the income statement. Okay, so before I end this video, I want to strongly suggest that anytime you have an income statement question to do, always, always assess the change in the provision before you start your income statement. Why? Consider this. You start your income statement and you get all the way to the expenses section only to realize your provision for bad debts decreased. What you gonna do now? You have to go back up under gross profit, add it in, scratch off your gross profit and put the new gross profit. Not gonna look too neat. So listen, this has happened to me more times than I can count. And trust me when I say it is annoying AF, right? I wanna save you that pain, so please trust me on this. Check out your provision for bad debts before you start your income statement to know whether the provision increases or decreases. Okay guys, that's it for this video. If you found it helpful, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna know every time I drop a new video, then be sure to click subscribe and click on the little notification bell icon to customize your preferences. And if you think someone will benefit from this video, please feel free to share it. And remember, you can do anything you want to do. You can be anything you want to be. If you have the proper mindset and you put in the work along the way, you're bound to have some trouble. So please don't be afraid to ask for help. And if what you're doing isn't working, adapt because change is the only constant. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.